One way that you can kind of get a sense of the way in which the 1760s was this incredibly sort of rich, revolutionary uh, moment when people really thought that they could uh, kind of establish themselves in different kinds of ways is that you have, uh, and again, this is one very small sample, one very small example, um, you have a noticeable uptick, an increase in the advertisements in newspapers for runaway wives. So um, husbands who probably aren't treating their wives that well anyway, um, maybe in past decades or past years, the wife just would have, you know, kind of slogged out at home and done the chores or helped with the farm or whatever else. By the time you reach the 1750s and 1760s, there's a different spirit in the air. Um, and women tap into this and actually just run away. They abscond and their husbands take out advertisements in local papers and plead with people not to give their wives any credit on their own name because they don't want to pay off whatever their wife is sort of accruing to them on sort of an 18th century credit card type thing. You find this all over the place and it's this really intriguing index of the way in which women themselves are thinking differently about their own social and societal roles. But even moving into the actual era of the Revolutionary War itself, elite women who are watching their husbands go to Philadelphia and try to think about what the new nation should look like have a sense of the injustices of the past and the possibilities of the future. And one of the most poignant examples of this is Abigail Adams, who uh, in March of 1776 uh, writes to her husband, John Adams, who's in Philadelphia. And she basically says to him, please, when you're down there in Philly, uh, remember the ladies. And remember, uh, this is a paraphrase, but she says, remember that all men would be tyrants if they could be. And so you've got to figure out a way to structure this new society in a way that takes that into account. Don't forget about us. And it's just, it's really this kind of tender exchange. And actually, uh, I think John Adams kind of ignores her completely, but um, it, it's a window into the ideas that women had about what was at stake for them during this period of tremendous social upheaval.